What's going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Parker Nierenstein, this is Vehicle Virgins, and today I'm reviewing an APR Stage 3 Golf R. year ago I drove an APR Stage 2 Golf R. It was a blast to drive, it was fast, and it had a manual transmission. Well now they've given me a Stage 3 Golf R, and it's really fast. Let's go take it for a spin. Let's do a little walk around of the car, shall we? I'm a big fan of the way the Golf R looks. It's understated, but if you know what you're looking at, then you can appreciate the fact that it is a nice sports car. These flow formed wheels look really nice. Got slotted Brembo brakes. The back is my favorite part of the Golf R. There's something about a muscular looking hatch, especially with those massive exhaust tips. The Pilot Sport 4S tires, 235s. Now let's go ahead and pop the hood. Actually, before that, pop the trunk here, like a little lever. Tons of space back here. I mean, I could probably fit. Yep, this is what we're doing in the middle of the review. Yep, I can fit back here easily. I like the aluminum pedals. Look how beautiful this APR carbon intake is. I also like the powered by APR badge here. This small two liter engine can make 536 horsepower at the wheels. That's impressive. How about a little exhaust clip for you? Let's start this thing up. Obviously limiting the sound a little bit because it was limiting the RPMs to 4,500, but we're gonna go for a little point of view drive later so you can hear the fullness of this beast. So, the Golf R starts at $35,600. With that, you get a peppy two liter turbo four cylinder, four doors, four wheel drive, and a six speed manual transmission. Now this car is actually fitted with an optional $1,100 six speed dual clutch DSG automatic transmission. It's hard to say which transmission I prefer, to be honest. I drove the Stage 2 car with the manual, and well, there's something special about having three pedal and a stick shift in a hot hatch. The linkage, and just how rubbery and inaccurate the gear lever felt, left something to be desired and left me wondering what the car would have been like with an automatic. And that's not a typical thing that happens when you drive a stick shift car. Usually, you're so excited to be rowing through the gears yourself, the last thing you're thinking about is, oh man, I wish I had this in an automatic. Well, now we have the DSG and get to test that out. A stock Golf R makes 292 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque at the crank. Zero to 60 happens in a really fast five seconds for a four-banger. The car only weighs 3,300 pounds, so it feels great to drive through the corners, and that's part of the reason why it's able to accelerate so fast that and the DSG transmission, coupled with the all-wheel drive system. It also comes with Volkswagen's DCC. It's proactive chassis control that actually allows you to customize the stiffness and the responsiveness of the suspension really easily. All you have to do is click the mode button here located by the DSG lever to switch from normal to sport to race. We've got it in race mode right now because well, we're on a twisty road and why would you drive a Golf R in normal mode? That's actually not entirely true. I could see people driving in normal mode all the time. The Golf R, while it's very fun to drive, is also a very practical vehicle. There's plenty of space in the back. There's certainly enough trunk space. It's a comfortable cruiser, but it also happens to be really nimble and fun to drive in the canyons. It's got an easy to use multimedia system. The seats are comfortable. It's relatively luxurious in here for a $35,000 car, but none of that matters on today's review, and here's why. I said the car has 292 horsepower stock at the crank. Yeah, let's just say this APR Stage 3 Golf R has quite a bit more power than that. Actually, more than double. Now, with all of the modifications that I'll go over in a bit, this car, using 101 octane race gas, makes 536 horsepower to the wheels and 475 pound-feet of torque to the wheels. That is a ridiculous amount. In fact, that is more than a Ferrari 458. And considering the fact that this weighs about the same as a Ferrari 458, that means you're faster than an Italian supercar for, well, clearly a lot less money. Now, right now, I'm not on race gas. I'm on 91 octane, the typical octane you can buy in California. 
unfortunately we're not in Michigan where you can drive it on 93, but such is life. So how much power do I have? 470 horsepower to the wheels and 425 pound-feet of torque to the wheels, which is still an absurd amount. So how was all this done? Well, there are a slew of modifications. We've got a carbon fiber intake. We've got new APR ECU tune. We've got a DSG tune. We have a turbocharger system, and we have an intercooler as well as a catch can, as well as an exhaust. And that's just the performance modifications in terms of power. We've also got flow formed wheels. We've got upgraded Brembo brakes to slow the beast down considering, wow, those work well. It's super fast. We have lowering springs as well as a rear sway bar. So how does all this come together? How fast is the APR Stage 3 Golf R really? Well, it turns out it is absurdly fast. Get this, quarter mile, 10.8 seconds at 128 miles an hour. You know what else did 10.8 seconds at 128 miles an hour when it was stock? My Lamborghini Huracan. Well, I mean, I guess they both are Volkswagen products. Mine just had a V10, cost over $200,000 more than this car and had 610 horsepower at the crank. Oh, my phone just flew, oh my God. In fact, this car is so fast, I brought my V-Box with me so we could track some zero to 60 times because I'm curious what this thing can put down. I don't know, you guys comment in the comment section below before I actually do the launch. What do you predict this car will do zero to 60 in? I'm gonna take a random guess and go with 3.5 seconds. That's gonna be my guess. I haven't done any testing yet. Let's see what it does. I'll be honest, the catback exhaust on this car is a little bit too loud and drony for me. For a four cylinder, it sounds pretty decent. And the DSG transmission is brilliant. There's no question in my mind, if I were to get a Golf R, especially tuned by APR, I would get it with a DSG. I can push the gear lever over to the right here. Now I'm in manual mode. We've got these small paddles mounted on the steering wheel. They're made of plastic and don't feel all that good, but the instant you touch the paddles, you're flicking up shifts and down shifts with lightning response. We've got tons of grip through the corners. Part of that is due to the tires and part that brilliant Haldex all wheel drive system. Oh my gosh. This thing, guys, this thing is actually an absolute freaking riot. I've got traction control off right now. Doesn't appear to understeer, really. Wow. Let's go ahead, put it in race, turn traction control off, put it into manual mode. Oh, there we go. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh man, this thing's fast. I think the takeaway is not only is this thing a rocket in a straight line, it's a downright blast in the corners too. You don't really lose any of the uh, fun drivability that you'd have uh, on a stock Golf R. You just get a car that's faster out of the corners. some of the features of the interior and talk about the comfort level. Obviously, this is a super fun car to drive, but how is it from a practicality standpoint and luxury standpoint? Honestly, the fit and finish of the materials is really nice. We have this leather wrapped steering wheel. It's got a nice diameter. It's a little bit thin for my liking, but it does feel good in your hands and the paddles are perfect at nine and three. We've got controls for the radio as well as calls. Visibility out of this thing is fantastic. Huge front window, the rear window is massive, and you really don't have any blind spots whatsoever. You could be a very large person. Even though this isn't a large car, you could be easily six foot 10 and drive your Golf R if you needed to. Let's go ahead and hop in the back seats, see what that's like. I have about nine inches of leg room uh, when I'm sitting behind myself, I'm five foot 11, so that's pretty awesome. In terms of headroom, definitely have a few inches here. Let's check out the middle seat. I still have headroom in the middle seat of a small hatchback. I like it back here. In the front, you have a really nice place to store your phone. This is kind of an afterthought by a lot of manufacturers, but I don't know how they don't realize that every person driving a car 
has their phone and needs to put it somewhere. And if you're using directions or you're listening to music, you don't necessarily want to put it in your pocket. Well, in the Golf R, there's a fantastic spot for that, and that is right in front of the DSG switch. You can place your phone in there and then close the cubby. However, if you don't close the little door, your phone will go flying because this car accelerates so damn hard. But two orders of business left before I end this review. One, zero to 60 testing on this with the V-Box, and two, seeing what my girlfriend Becca thinks of this hot hatch. I think she's gonna be shocked at how truly fast this little Golf is. So this car, stock, makes 292 horsepower, so like Alex's car. This one makes 536 horsepower to the wheels. Okay. So stock into zero to 60 in five seconds. My guess, and I'm having people guess below what they think, I'm thinking like three and a half seconds, zero to 60. Am I supposed to guess? Yeah, give a guess. Um, like four? Three four? Point nine. 3.9? Final answer. Final answer, submit it. <laughs> Good work. Oh, why did we just pound it? I don't I know. I wasn't sure you put your hand in. <laughs> I thought I didn't know what to do, and then I was thinking about turkeying you. And like... Oh, you should have turkeyed. And now we're gonna see how fast it does, zero to 60. Left foot all the way on the brake, right foot all the way on the gas. Whoa! Wait, what was it? 3.4 seconds. Nice job! Wow, that, that's fast. Look at that, zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds. That's actually really impressive. performance package costs seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars it doesn't come with the exhaust or the wheels although the exhaust in my opinion is a little bit loud and droney i think this car would be cooler if it was completely <laughs> subdued i mean i understand this is like a marketing vehicle so they had to make it stand out but if you were to actually buy one and do an apr stage three package keep it 100 percent stock looking don't put an exhaust on it keep it totally stock sounding and then be able to run with a stock huracan or a 570s or ra v10 ridiculous that it's yeah. this fast well i hope you guys enjoyed this review like always please browse the channel and subscribe special thanks to con media for providing the car and apr tuning i look forward to seeing you next video